Once more, if you're just joining, my name is Charlie Ornstein, and I'm a managing editor for ProPublica. Welcome to today's webinar. Closed captioning of the program is available and can be enabled by clicking on the closed caption option on the bar towards the bottom of your screen. As an additional note, this session is being recorded, and a link of the video will be emailed to everyone who registered. For those new to ProPublica, ProPublica is a nonprofit newsroom dedicated to investigative journalism. You can find a link to our healthcare coverage in the chat. Today, we'll be walking you through how to use ProPublica's updated Nursing Home Inspect database. As a reminder, today's webinar is primarily for journalists, but we understand others may be joining us to learn more about what information the database offers. We'll do our best to address as many questions as we can at the end of the session. My colleagues will be joining me shortly, but first I wanted to open the conversation with some background on the database and how it came to be. So as many of you know, um, nursing homes are an important healthcare option for folks um, who have either uh, serious disabilities or are older and need additional help uh, with activities of daily living. About 1.1 million people live in nursing homes across the country. According to the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, which is a federal government agency, um, in July of 2022, um, there were about 15,000 certified nursing homes in the United States. Most nursing homes are certified as both skilled nursing facilities, which means they provide managed recovery period after a person's illness or injury. Um, say somebody has a, a hip replacement. Uh, and there are long-term care facilities that deliver health care and services or resident needs for mental or physical conditions that are not rising to the level of skilled nursing care. So those are, I apologize, those are the, the recovery services. Um, nursing homes are among the most overseen facilities in the country, in part because residents are so vulnerable. It is both where they live and where they receive um, medical care. So the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, which is the federal agency, which is known as CMS, regulates these facilities in a couple of different ways. The first are regular surveys where they go in um, about once a year to look at the conditions at a facility. And the second is based on complaint investigations. Um, and the reason I'm sharing this information is that our tool, which you will hear about in a couple of minutes, uh, is based on the information from these uh, inspections that CMS conducts. Uh, I wanted to just take a minute to show you the resources that are available from the federal government on their website so you can understand what is available on the federal site and how what we offer is different um, than uh, what you can find on the federal site. So the federal government runs a site called um, Care Compare, and I'd like to share that. Uh, I'm going to share my screen so you can see um, see that site here. So the Care Compare site enables you to look up either a nursing home by name or by location. Uh, and in this case, let's let's just type in Michigan. It's where I'm from, so I like to use that as an example. Um, so you type in Michigan and you'd hit search. And you'd see here that there's 300 nursing homes in Michigan. Um, and it is uh, it looks like it's alphabetically searched for you. Um, you can further sub look for by a county, um, by a facility name. You can sort it in different ways by an overall rating or by other ratings. And so in this case, we're going to be talking about uh, health inspections. So we can say we want to sort it by um, to look for facilities that are much below average. Um, and then we can apply that. You could see that it's going to pull up 82 facilities that is labeled as much below average. And you can click into a facility. And within the facility, you can click in to view their inspection results. And within the inspection results, you can click in to view various reports. Um, you know, this can be difficult. If you, as a journalist, are trying to compare different facilities in your community, you know, it can be tough to understand how these actually stack up to one another. And we try to make that easier in our tool, um, which again, we'll be showing in, in a couple minutes. When you click to view one of the facility reports, you can see here, view full report.
and it will pull up a PDF of um, a particular inspection report um, here as well. So I'm going to stop the, the share for a minute. And um, CMS offers a variety of, um, of additional data points that you can access with respect to nursing homes. So they make their nursing home data um, available online. And you can find that we're going to put a link in the chat to that. I'll also share my screen. They make available data files uh, on nursing homes and rehab services. And you can see you can download individual files from this menu. And again, we're going to make that link available on the screen. But you have to know what you're doing with data. You have to be able to go across different data sets. And it can be a disincentive for sort of diving in and understanding where to start on a particular facility or in a particular community. Um, there are also uh, a series of zip files that are available on our site, which enable you to actually get the words that comprise the CMS um, inspection reports. Um, and those are, again, uh, require you to have some knowledge of how to use Excel and look across files. I wanted to mention one other site that I think is helpful to have as a context and a backdrop um, before I turn it over. Uh, and that is that the US um, Department of Health and Human Services Office of Inspector General um, inspects and does a number of reports on nursing homes. And you can go to the Inspector General's website and find uh, all of their reports that are available. They are a helpful resource in terms of thinking about issues affecting nursing homes overall um, and context to put your stories in if you're looking at a particular facility, for example. Okay, um, one other separate note, um, if there are um, questions, there is a Q&A box at the bottom, please, um, please feel free to drop your questions um, in there. Uh, I wanna now turn it over and introduce my colleague, Ruth Talbot, who will be ta taking us through a walkthrough of our Nursing Home Inspect database. Welcome, Ruth. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us. Um, so I'm going to walk us through kind of a live demo of the tool, um, but before that, uh, I'm just going to share a few quick overview slides. Um, let me know if you can't see the screen. Um, real quickly, Charlie touched on this, but this tool is kind of aimed right now at people who want to deep dive on these inspection reports and the individual deficiencies within them. So deficiencies within an inspection report are just the individual issues or uh, failure to meet standards of care found in those inspection reports. Uh, so this, our tool kind of focuses on searching and understanding uh, these reports, um, but we also hope that it is accessible for people who are maybe more casual consumers who are thinking about putting a loved one in a nursing home and just want to kind of do a deeper dive on that home. And I'll touch on this in a second, but we are actively investing in uh, Nursing Home Inspect. And so we are, one of the things that we are hoping to do is to make it more accessible for that kind of average consumer uh, who may not have a ton of background on what these inspection reports mean. And then just a few data notes before we dive in. So our, our data only includes Medicare certified nursing homes. Uh, so if there's a nursing home that isn't in this program, it may not appear in our data. Uh, and then also uh, there are some kind of longer term care facilities that you might kind of get confused with, but uh, if it's not a nursing home, it is also not in our data. Um, again, if there's a home that you think should be in the data, feel free to reach out, um, but those are kind of common reasons you may not see a home you expect to see in our tool. Uh, we update our data about once a month, and as Charlie said, we pull all of it from the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, CMS. Uh, some of the data that they have is self-reported by nursing homes. Uh, it's, it's not a lot of it, but just a nuance. If you are using this to report, it's good to be aware, you know, what is uh, self-reported by a home versus what is like result of oversight by the government. Uh, I believe like COVID vaccination data uh, is still self-reported. And then lastly, just a little note that I will be reiterating throughout this walkthrough, which is just no one data point summarizes a home. Uh, it's always good to get as full of a context as you can. Uh, we hope that these inspection reports really provide a lot of information 
but you should always read them in full, reach out to a home if you have any questions. Uh, if you're thinking about putting a loved one in a home, it's always good to visit the home. Uh, everything we present is just one, one piece of hopefully uh, a large picture that you'll be considering. And then just uh, like I said before, we are investing in nursing home inspect. Uh, I will mention a few things throughout the presentation that we plan on doing relatively soon. Uh, but uh, we want to hear from you. We want to hear what would make this tool better for you, more useful. Uh, and please feel free to get in touch. I would love to hear from you guys. Uh, awesome. So now I'm going to switch over to demoing. Uh, so, oh wait, actually, I just got ahead of myself. I'm going to give a brief overview of the kind of main pages I'll be demoing, and then I'll switch into the live demo. Uh, so we have first our landing page. This is a good place to go if you kind of are looking for a national overview or kind of don't know where to start. Uh, it uh, kind of provides an intro to searching the tool. Uh, it also provides some summaries on states and, and homes that may have a lot of deficiencies or fines. Um, we also have state and county pages. So these maybe allow you to kind of do a deeper dive on a specific area. If you are say a local reporter based in New Hampshire, or if you are looking to put a loved one uh, in a home, maybe like in the county that you reside in, these are good places to go. Uh, they have a list of homes, some summary information that you can sort by, um, and a few other things that we will get into during the demo. We also have specific pages for each nursing home. Uh, these provide, again, some summary stats on the home, and then they also provide more in-depth uh, information on these inspection reports uh, and try to make them a little bit more easily consumable. And last but not least, we have our searching feature, which as Charlie said, is, is kind of uh, the secret sauce of this tool. It allows you to search across uh, every inspection report in the data, um, look for trends, um, look for things that uh, might be uh, common issues and really filter that down to find what you're looking for. And okay, now I'm not getting ahead of myself when I say we are going to jump into the live demo. Awesome. So this is the homepage. Um, as you can see, it has some summary information about states, some summary information about homes, ones that have the most deficiencies. So like I said, uh, those deficiencies are the individual issues found in inspection reports, uh, highest fines by home, uh, if you want to just see all homes, sort by various categories, we have, uh, we have an all homes page that you can filter by various things, lowest deficiency count, uh, highest serious deficiencies, uh, highest deficiency count, things like that, uh, just to kind of quickly find homes in, with a nationwide focus that might be ones you're interested in looking at. Um, we also have uh, these sort of summary information about states that are maybe high on some of these uh, indices. So uh, serious deficiencies, I think maybe I'll use this term throughout the presentation. So if anyone isn't familiar with it, serious deficiencies are ones that are causing immediate jeopardy. Uh, so these are kind of the ones that maybe are most worth looking at there when um, a resident is put in maybe immediate harm or immediate uh, possibility of harm. Uh, and then one thing I want to highlight here is we've added this uh, focus on inspections delays throughout the throughout the app. And this is just because uh, I think post the pandemic, a lot of states and homes are behind on those scheduled surveys that Charlie mentioned. And we think this is important because those are sort of the routine inspections that cover uh, a comprehensive view of what might be going on at a home whereas those complaint surveys or the infection control surveys are very specific in response to say a complaint made about a home. So we wanna highlight that some states are still catching up on their inspections. Uh, I think this problem is getting better. I think it was worse a few months ago, uh, but this is still an ongoing thing that some states are really struggling with. Uh, the only other thing I wanna highlight here is that on nationwide and on a state-by-state -state basis, we have uh, started to surface this section called most recent serious deficiencies. Again, those are the ones that are causing immediate jeopardy to resident health and safety. This is hopefully to help reporters uh, get a better sense of what issues have recently come up in homes either in their state or nationwide. 
uh, get an overview of what those issues might be and explore them more thoroughly. So you can always pop into the homepage here or go to explore the report directly if you're interested in learning more about those. Uh, so then if you wanna do a deeper dive, say you wanna start looking at a state, um, we have a search tool here that should make it easy for you to find what you're looking for. So you can go here, uh, search by either state, county, territory, or nursing home name. So if you want to get a little more specific in your search, you're only searching for nursing home names, you can narrow it down by this, same with counties. Uh, if I'm specifically looking for Illinois, I can hop into Illinois. Uh, the state pages offer some summary statistics on the homes, and then uh, also they offer kind of a more focused version of that most recent serious deficiencies section, um, so just specific to Illinois. Uh, if you want to see more of those most recent serious deficiencies, you can uh, pop into the see more and you can see up to 30 of those if you, if you want to just explore kind of all the ones that have happened in the last few months. And then lastly, you can sort of search by home, sort those, see what, you know, again, like with those, this list of all homes, you can search by most serious deficiencies. Um, you can search by lowest deficiencies, uh, all those things to kind of help you narrow down to what homes you may, may be interested in. Uh, if you want to get more specific in your search, um, you can go down to the county level. So say I'm based in Chicago and I wanna go down to Cook County. Uh, I am I'm not from Cook County, unlike Charlie, but uh, just using it as an example. Um, and this has the similar summary information and same level of ability to search by homes, uh, filter those. Uh, we do not have recent serious deficiency on the county level yet because a lot of counties don't have any, but uh, we may add that for the counties that, that do. Uh, so one thing you might wanna do here, as I've, as I've said, is kind of look for a home of interest so if I'm looking for a home that maybe uh, warrants further scrutiny, uh, I might uh, sort by highest count of serious deficiencies. And uh, if I do that, it'll filter down this list, um, starting with the ones with, as you can see here, the most serious deficiencies found within Cook County. And it'll kind of go down um, based on that. I could also filter by something like highest deficiency count. Um, so as you can see, this one, this, this home has a lot of total deficiencies, but very, uh, very few serious deficiencies, um, or zero in this case. Uh, and those are the ones that are causing immediate jeopardy. Um, so maybe I will filter again by highest count of serious deficiencies, because I'm really interested in the ones that uh, caused immediate jeopardy to resident health or safety. Um, and then, so maybe I want to explore this home um, and we'll look at that one in a second. Um, I can also filter by things like lowest efficiency count if I'm interested in homes that are doing really well, um, or at least that have very few total deficiencies. Um, and so we can see the, all these homes um, have a relatively low number of total deficiencies and um, Basically, all of them have zero total or zero serious deficiencies and uh, very low fines or no fines. Um, again, no one data point defines a home. You can't just be like, okay, it doesn't have, you know, it doesn't have a lot of serious deficiencies or no total deficiencies. Therefore, I know for sure it's a great home. But those are good signals that maybe uh, the quality of care is is good there. Um, so that's the county page. And then uh, if we want to explore those two homes and learn a little bit about the more about the homes page, we can hop into the first one. This was, again, just a reminder, this was a home that had uh, very few total deficiencies. Um, so on every homes page, you're going to see relatively similar information. You're going to see summary stats about the home, uh, where it's based, you can pop out to its uh, Medicare page, which is the page that um, Charlie showed earlier or the, the site that Charlie showed earlier. So you can see its overall rating and other things about it. Oops. Um, you can also see its ownership type. Um, I think I mentioned earlier that we are going to be adding new features to Nursing Home Inspect. And one of those new features we plan on adding is expanded ownership information. Uh, CMS has made more ownership information available. 
uh, and we plan on improving uh, what we offer around that, making it easier to search by owner um, and see you know, everything a certain person might own or a certain LLC might own and um, just, just kind of uh, figure out things from there. We also have staffing and capacity information. Uh, we have surfaced these two metrics here, nurse hours per resident per day and nurse turnover. We've surfaced these uh, because CMS says they are strongly linked with quality of care. And what you want to look for here is that uh, this number, nurse hours per resident per day, is relatively high, uh, hopefully above the state average, which we show down here. And for nurse turnover, you are hoping that that number is relatively low, hopefully uh, below the state average, which again, we show down here. Uh, and then you can also see things like uh, COVID staff vaccination information. Uh, is the staff, have they gotten that initial round of vaccinations? Are they up to date um, with their boosters? And then you can see more information about the inspection reports here, but we'll get into those um, in our second home that I'm about to show. So this second home is the one that had a high count of total deficiencies and a high count of serious deficiencies. Um, and you might see that we have some of the same information, but some things are different. Uh, we have the same ownership information. We list the staffing and capacity, but you'll see with this home, the staffing capacity is much lower. It is below the state average. Uh, and this is you know, generally bad. Um, again, no one number defines a home, but the more, uh, the more nurse hours per resident per day, generally the better outcomes for residents. Nurse turnover is also a little higher. Um, it's definitely below or above state average. Um, COVID vaccination data, it is, it's below the national and state average you can see, but it is, it's not well below. Um, the other thing that we have added is this flag section. So flags will be different per home. You'll see different flags depending on the home you're visiting uh, and what we think is worth noting about it. Uh, in this case, we have noted that this is a special focus facility. That means the government uh, is subjecting it to kind of an increased level of oversight. That means more standard surveys, more standard inspections. Uh, and that is because it has a history of substandard care. Uh, I'm gonna switch to another home which has some more flags just to show more examples of what these might be. There's the special focus facility candidate, which means that it meets the criteria to be that special focus facility, but the government uh, has not yet flagged it as that. There's also a flag that indicates a low staff vaccination rate. That just means that the staff vaccination rate is well below the state average. There's also this inspections delayed flag, which gets back to what I was talking about uh, on the homes page. It just means that this home has not had a standard survey in quite some time. Uh, I think they are supposed to happen roughly every 12 months at most every 18, and this one has not had one in more than two years. And that's, uh, you know, it's just a little bit of a warning that if there are issues at this home, maybe they aren't being caught because there isn't that kind of routine inspection going on. It doesn't mean that there are necessarily more issues, it's just something to be aware of, especially if you like look down and you don't see recent deficiencies, recent reports, that might mean not that there aren't problems, but just that they haven't been inspected recently. Uh, so switching back to this home, the one with lots of deficiencies, uh, just diving into the inspection report section, which is like I said, kind of uh, the focus of the app. Um, you can see a little summary about uh, the deficiencies found against a home. And again, those are just individual issues uh, within inspection reports. And Charlie showed one of these a second ago, but I'm just going to show it again. Um, this is one of those inspection reports from CMS, um, and they are pretty wordy, um, pretty terminology heavy. Uh, if you're familiar with them, I think people are pretty good at parsing them, but uh, if you're not, they can be a little hard to, to read initially. So our goal on homes pages is to really make these easy to skim in a way that those reports may not be. Um, that means sort of surfacing summary information about the reports, um, the date it was filed, the type of report, the number of issues found, um, the seriousness of these issues. Um, so if you're familiar with uh, this data, you might know kind of the letter grade seriousness. 
uh, which goes from A to L, A being least serious, L being the most serious. Um, we also break that down for people. So if you're here, you can see this one is of seriousness J. Uh, if that doesn't mean anything to you, we hope that this will help. Um, seriousness is made up of two things, severity and scope. Severity is kind of the level of harm and scope is how many people were affected by the issue. Um, so we hope this makes it kind of easy to judge really quickly, you know, how serious of an issue is this, uh, how many people did it affect. We also have uh, the category of the deficiency and um, the description of the general type of de um, deficiency that it was. Just to give you a sense of maybe what category, was it administrative? Was it a resident's rights? Was it a quality of care, uh, et cetera? And then if you do want more information, you can always click through to the full report. That will be that CMS report that I discussed. Um, yeah, and so, you know, we just hope that it's easy to kind of scroll through here and get a sense of which reports you might want to do a deeper dive on. And the last thing I want to highlight on the homes page is this penalty section. Uh, it just lists all the fines or payment suspensions against a home. Um, so this is uh, when CMS either fines a home or uh, stops the Medicare payments to a home. Um, if, that in, if that fine or penalty is linked to an inspection report, we make it easy to just sort of scroll up and see that report associated with it um, so that you can kind of link you know, what, the fine, what, what the fine was with maybe the issues that were related to the fine. Um, and if not, that tends to be because it was um, a data reporting issue or maybe an infection control program issue. There's been a lot, I think, more of these fines that haven't been uh, associated with inspection report during the pandemic, um, but most of them are, in, are associated with inspection reports. So you can kind of scroll up and see what's going on in those various reports. All right, so the last thing I want to highlight um, is just this advanced search feature. So this is what Charlie was talking about that lets you search um, across all of the inspection reports across all homes nationwide. Um, and we've updated this to do some more advanced text searching um, as well as kind of adding advanced filtering where you can filter by multiple uh, locations. Right now, this is just states or territories, but we're hoping to expand that. You can also sort by date so say you're interested in reports that were filed early on in the pandemic, you could search for you know, three months at the very beginning of the pandemic. You can search by report type, uh, seriousness, which is that letter grade that we talked about earlier. So if you're only interested in say deficiencies that count as immediate jeopardy, you can check these boxes. You can also sort by deficiency category. Uh, and I think Emily is gonna mention this later when they're, when they're speaking about their reporting, but we want to expand the filters as well, and we're probably going to add uh, filtering by F tag, um, which if you're familiar with nursing home reporting um, is just kind of a lower level of category within these. Um, yeah, and so I'm just gonna do kind of a test search, show you how that works. So say maybe I'm in the Pacific Northwest and I'm interested in uh, Oregon and Washington. And like I said, I'm interested in those kind of um, deficiencies that constitute immediate jeopardy. And then in terms of the text search, um, this is maybe not a real query I would use, but it's just to kind of show an example. You can do some relatively advanced stuff. You're also totally well, able and welcome to just search for like basic words, apologies for kind of the dark uh, dark search term that I just went to right there. Uh, but you can do, you know, your basic word, um, but you can also do more advanced things. Um, so in this case, this should search for the word pressure um, and either the term ulcer or sore. So if you wanna do kind of more advanced queries where you're looking for a number of different things, uh, you can do those now. One thing to note, I have put uh, the words pressure and sore in quotation marks. Um, that is because words now that we search for in the app that are not in quotation marks are subject to something called stemming. Stemming is where uh, it searches for various forms of a word. So if I went back and put in the word choke, uh, it would search for chokes, choking, choked. Uh, again, sorry for choosing that as my example. Um, but we know that maybe that will be useful for some people who are searching kind of broadly for a concept, but that also some people might want to search for a very specific word. 
if that's the case, you just want to put it in quotations. Like if, say, if you want to search for medication, but you don't want to search for medicating or medicated, you just put medication in quotes. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and submit this. And it looks like we found uh, 11 inspection reports that matched with 11 matching issues or deficiencies within those reports. Um, we surfaced the seriousness of the deficiency that was found to match, and then also some text from the deficiency to try to give you a good sense of what's going on in the report, see if it's something you're interested in exploring further. If you are interested in looking at the full report, all you need to do is click through to here on the PDF. Um, let's see if it loads quickly. Um, and it should take you to that full inspection report so that you can look at, the, um, at that text in its full context. One thing to note here is that we only surface in each of these reports, which is, which is the, each box found in your results, we only surface the deficiencies that matched your search criteria. So this report might have more than one deficiency in it but only the one that matched what I searched, which was this ulcer or sore and pressure. Uh, you can also click through to the home to see more information about all deficiencies found against it. Um, and once you're here, you know, if you're scrolling through and you're not seeing what you're looking for, or you realize that you want to search more things, you can go ahead and uh, update the filters while you're in there. So I'm gonna say, oh, maybe I'm interested in Idaho as well. And it'll update, it'll add in, seems like it found two more reports in Idaho that match my criteria. So maybe I'm also interested in like less severe deficiencies, um, but ones, you know, ones that are still, still quite severe. Um, so I added in kind of G, H, and I in terms of seriousness. And now it's found quite, quite a few more reports to go through. Um, and you can also filter down by date or if you're interested in like the most ones that match or sorting by home, by state, you can do that. You can also see by most recent reports. So say I wanna see just like the most recent report that matches this criteria, I would search by that. And it looks like it's one from June of this year. Um, yeah, so we hope that this gives you kind of a lot more in-depth control over your searches, um, but uh, like I said, we really want to hear from you. We want to know what, uh, what works for you, what doesn't, uh, if there's anything from the old app or the old searching in the app that you miss, uh, any features you wanna add, any filters that would be useful. Um, we are really excited to hear from you and keep improving the tool. Um, yeah, so I don't know if there are any questions in the chat, I will look through, but uh, in the meantime, I would like to pass it back off to Emily and Charlie, who are going to talk about uh, using this tool to report on nursing homes and also just some of the nursing home reporting that they have done. Thanks, Ruth. Um, Emily is going to kick us off. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. I'm so glad you could join us today. Um, I just wanted to kind of go through a little bit of the landscape of nursing home regulation and uh, sort of what agencies and individuals might intersect with with, uh, with nursing homes. Um, the sort of make everything that Ruth just went over really kind of human and matter um, to your stories. So um, how can and how what Ruth has mentioned can support your investigations. So broadly speaking, um, as Charlie said, there are about 15,000 nursing homes across the country. Um, and at the federal level, they're regulated by the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, which also, uh, and the federal government also provides funding to these facilities through Medicare and Medicaid. Um, and then as you zoom in down to the facility level, you've got state agencies which regulate nursing homes as well. There may be more uh, strict rules around, for example, staffing in different states that uh, legislatures have enacted. Um, and at the state level, uh, nursing homes can play a really big role in legislation related to the facilities. They can tend to be potentially very large lobbying groups at your state legislature. Um, and then at the local level, there's 
uh, you know, especially if you're a community journalist, if you're a really uh, local journalist, like individual facilities can have their own stories. And uh, regardless of what level of nursing home kind of strata you're looking at, you'll probably end up looking at individual homes and kind of the people, what people experience there and how that interacts with your story. I'm going to go through a few examples of how that has worked out um, in my reporting. Um, and then I have a note here that says, these can all kind of blur, you know, there are nursing home owners or, or companies that manage the care at nursing homes that span different cities, counties, states, um, and uh, it all kind of comes, it can all kind of mix. So it's not a hard and fast rule, but that's generally the landscape. Um, to build off what Ruth said, I just want to say one of the most useful things when you're digging into this space is to really like learn what your F tags are. And those are basically codes for different uh, citations or deficiencies that are used by um, uh, state and federal uh, regulators. So um, you can kind of just, I, I kind of usually just Google like cheat sheet, uh, F tag cheat sheet, and something will come up where you'll get a list of like all of the F tags and like little descriptions for what they are. And that can kind of introduce you to some ideas for like what your story might be about. Um, so uh, there's a wide range of, of, of F tags, I think, um, and, and a lot of inspiration that you can get from them. Probably for the most part, you would be interested in um, an abuse and neglect and exploitation category. Um, and uh, I have in the past also reported on the infection control, which has obviously become really important in the context of the pandemic. Um, and I, uh, heard from Ruth that they are, uh, going to be, um, making the tool, uh, you may soon be able to actually filter by specific F tag with this tool, which is like really great news because that is something that, um, would make, I think will make our lives a lot easier. <laughs> so, um, uh, so outside of the F tags, I would say also, uh, get into reading these um, survey reports, because um, as Ruth said, there is a lot of vocabulary that you're not probably going to be familiar with. Uh, and and um, to build on Ruth's example, the um, pressure ulcer was something I wasn't really uh, familiar with. It's something that you'd probably know as a fed sore, um, but in the literature or in, the, in these service reports, that's how it's referred to. So getting familiar with that vocabulary through reading a bunch of reports will probably get you started. Um, so I'm just going to go through pretty uh, quickly some of the stories uh, that I've uh, contributed to that have sort of intersected in this space. Um, so last year, we wrote a story about uh, medical exemptions to the COVID-19 vaccine uh, for uh, nursing home workers. And uh, sort of the backdrop of this is that, um, you know, science tells us that the uh, reasons to avoid the vaccine are very, 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 very rare. Um, the CDC reported that sort of maybe six out of a million doses or fewer than six out of a million uh, doses had an adverse reaction that was severe enough to warrant avoiding the vaccine altogether. Um, so that's really, really, really small, 0.006% uh, of those doses. Uh, comparatively, we found with this new data that uh, CMS has begun to collect and publish that um, there were nursing homes where a large, uh, large proportion of their staff had actually turned in a medical exemption for to avoid the vaccine. Um, and so this is a really crucial issue uh, at this time, especially because by the, when we wrote this story, it was about a year after um, the vaccines had been widely available for nursing home staff. And it was really troubling the idea that there would be uh, a nursing home worker who could uh, file for a medical exemption um, erroneously. Um, so this story was really a story that was about science, about a federal mandate, um, about shifting regulations in COVID, um, and using the data that from uh, the nursing home inspect tool and from CMS, we were able to compare states to find some states had a really large proportion of their nursing home workforce that were claiming medical exemptions or just weren't getting vaccinated for any reason. 
Um, and then we were also able to take advantage of the surveys to find um, a, I think this was a new, new F tag where um, a nursing home worker had, uh, had uh, claimed, uh, claimed a medical exemption, but the inspector found that that wasn't a legitimate exemption, had cited the facility. Um, so that's sort of how all of these things came together. And you could kind of think of this as like an industry kind of way to approach a story like this, where you're thinking, how is this industry adapting? And when you're looking at all the different valuations and some of the things that you'll be reading in the surveys report, you want, might want to ask yourself, okay, like how is this best practices? Like how is this, uh, does this reflect the what we know about how to treat nursing home residents and to make sure that they are they are uh, able to thrive in these facilities, uh, not to mention you know just survive. Um, so that is how we sort of approached this story. Um, prior to coming for ProPublica, I was part of a team that looked at a very um, obscure uh, funding mechanism of Medicaid. Um, and so to try and give you the shortest version of this very, very, very wonky topic, um, the, uh, you know, nursing home care is paid for by Medicaid, Medicare, and uh, private pay. And uh, Medicaid rates at nursing homes are lower than Medicare rates. So if you're an individual on Medicaid, you, the government is paying the nursing home less for the same services as someone who receives Medicare. Um, so you have that sort of reality. At the same time, you have county nursing homes or, or state nursing homes publicly owned that are considered the sort of safety net uh, nursing homes. These are where, um, these are where the, the sort of poorest of the poor who uh, require medical care around the clock or who are elderly end up going. And as such, they have a disproportionate number of low-income people. So they don't have maybe the, the balance of private pay and Medicare um, recipients to balance out the low, lower rates of Medicaid. Such a crash course into what's called supplemental payments, um, or almost, because a supplemental payment is where uh, to compensate for those lower rates at these public uh, facilities, um, CMS will pay a higher rate to a public facility to compensate for the fact that there are so many Medicaid recipients at the facility. Indiana's county hospitals figured that out and uh, about 20 county hospitals bought up 93% of the nursing homes in the state, making them all uh, qualified to receive uh, this extra money. And as you can see, it had a big impact because Indiana became like the largest recipient of this money uh, and it's pulling on, you know, billions of dollars in extra Medicaid dollars. Um, so this tip had originated from some different kind of other tips that we had gotten. Um, but when we looked at the system, we kind of kept asking ourselves like, well, where is this money going? And we actually still don't really know because uh, the hospitals won't tell us. And I think there is a, an ongoing lawsuit still um, by IndyStar, my former paper, where they're still pushing for the release of this information. Um, but what we said was like, well, if it's going to the nursing homes, like it's supposed to, theoretically, in theory, then there would be really good care because we're getting all of this extra money. Well, what it turned out is that the care was still not uh, very good. And in this case, we focused on staffing as our metric of whether care was, uh, th there was uh, quality care at the nursing homes because we were told by CMS, by experts who research nursing home care over and over again that um, the uh, staffing was the most critical component of care at these facilities. So we kind of used that as our balance. We looked at the funding and we looked at the care and we said, if we're getting our kind of, our thesis was like, if we're getting so much money, why is the care lacking so far behind all of these other states that don't receive the money? And so that's sort of a way we were kind of, uh, we, that's the way we approached this story. 
Um, we supplemented uh, this story with MACPAC data and research. Um, MACPAC is the Medicaid and CHIP Payment and Access Commission. It does congressional research on Medicaid. Super interesting if you're into that, which you might find yourself if you look at nursing homes. Um, we looked again at nursing home survey narratives and we looked at lawsuits. Um, and those are sort of how we built out our story. Uh, and I just wanted to highlight a couple of kind of brief snippets that we pulled out. Um, I did not know Ruth was gonna show an Aperian facility, but ours are also Aperian for some reason. Um, and uh, these were just a couple of, uh, of the kinds of, um, you know, reports that came out of these facilities, which were pretty awful. Um, one of the things that is difficult about nursing homes is kind of, um, it's difficult to get inside. Uh, I mean, theoretically, we could just walk in, but there's also, there's, it is, you know, technically private property, all the things. These survey boards allowed us, particularly um, as the pandemic progressed in 2020, an insight into these facilities that we otherwise would not have had. And that's really, that. those are what really helped us drive our stories about the quality of care there. Um, so then as a result of our nursing home coverage and even here at ProPublica, I've kind of continued to sort of uh, use these surveys as uh, in my reporting on for different, different issues. So, uh, and this is where you really get into the more local uh, opportunities. These are individual nursing homes, or perhaps they might be companies that you're, maybe they're based where you are. I mean, uh, there's a lot of different ways to look at, at it, um, but this is where you can kind of get into like a more local story. Um, and so a large part of my job in 2020 was just reading all of these survey reports, uh, which is when I discovered that there was an LPN um, who tragically uh, unhooked an oxygen mask from a patient who later died. Um, and she was ultimately charged and I believe pled out, uh, was charged with a, uh, uh, a, a charge related to um, acting without a license because she was not she was not licensed highly enough to do that sort of action. Um, this story was both an opportunity to you know something really horrible happened, but we also made sure in our story to build context into that. And part of the context of that was that this occurred at a time when the nursing home workforce was really really taxed. And when she herself, uh, she told uh, health inspectors that she was um, dealing, she was uh, caring for 40 COVID positive patients at the time uh, that this happened, that she made this um, really an uh, awful choice. Um, so uh, it had the context of the wider industry. And, and, you know, I remember one of the things that we were quoted in the story is an, uh, a nursing home advocate who said, you know, ultimately this is, a, this is a facility's, you know, responsibility. So I think it's important to kind of keep that all in mind when you're looking at these different individual um, acts. Um, again, surveys became really helpful uh, when we were reporting on the Minnesota Board of Nursing. Uh, Starting out, did not expect really to interact with nursing homes in this story at all. Um, but what we were what we were looking for uh, in our reporting is um, act, actual harm that had been done uh, by a nurse that had been reported to the board of nursing, uh, but who had um, but who had uh, not had the complaint processed quickly enough, and then went on to cause more harm. And we were able to find just that. And I think the most interesting part of the survey report that we reviewed for this story is that the administrator, an administrator at that facility actually called out the state uh, in two inspectors and said, this is not my fault. We did a background check on this person. We did not uh, see anything in their background check that would indicate that, that she had diverted drugs, which is a kind of technical term for like stealing drugs. Uh, in this case, narcotics. We had no idea that she had done that. And there's nothing on her license, nothing flagged for us to know that. And, and yeah, we're getting cited. So that really helped, you know, build color and kind of like a real life situation to what we were dealing with on a more data-driven, um, you know, numbers of complaints and lag time kind of story. 
Um, and then as Ruth has mentioned, I think some of the real opportunity for the search tool that a uh, nursing home inspect allows you to do is uh, searching actual individual keywords, which can maybe uh, aren't captured in the idea of the of the F tag, but something more specific than that that you want to look at. So my examples here, social media, law enforcement, um, police, drug diversion, if you're looking for something kind of more specific than an F tag will give you. Uh, and then what's next for nursing homes? There is probably there is endless reporting to do on nursing homes. Um, the pandemic was a hugely disruptive force. We are still very much um, kind of reeling from it. Um, nursing home residents are still among the most vulnerable to COVID and we're at a time uh, when it feels basically like society has kind of moved on from any kind of large scale precautions. Um, so you have to wonder sort of like, how are companies dealing with this? How are, uh, you know, how are facilities handling this? Is, you know, what what is the staffing situation after a years of burnout uh, kind of level of, of pace for these workers? Um, pandemic also spurred legislation across this country. Some states boosted staffing requirements. Many others provided immunity, uh, civil immunity to nursing homes. How is that working out? Is it benefiting the residents? Is it benefiting the companies? I'd love to know if, you know, how these things have uh, sort of started to uh, pan out now that it's been a couple of years and some of the laws have been passed. The uh, Supreme Court recently upheld the right of nursing home residents in publicly owned facilities to file lawsuits, uh, civil rights lawsuits. Um, Probably not as important uh, to you unless you live in a state like Indiana that does have so many public nursing homes, but it may be something uh, that has repercussions down the line. Uh, and then private equity is, uh, I think, increasingly moving into the space and uh, where there's profit off of vulnerable people, there's probably a story to be told. Um, so it's another thing to examine and kind of keep an eye out in your communities. Um, so with that, I will turn it over to Charlie. Thanks, Emily. Um, I wanted to show a few additional examples of how keyword searching can really help you to, you know, explore what's on your mind and really lets you um, use your imagination to find uh, interesting stories and story ideas. So I'm going to share my screen and, sh and show a couple examples here. Um, so one of the most serious issues in nursing homes today is when you have residents um, who elope. And elopement means that a resident has left the, left the facility um, and has left the facility uh, when they shouldn't have left the facility. Um, this can cause res put residents in danger, um, residents who have dementia, who may be confused, who may not know how to return home. Uh, and there are situations where residents who have eloped uh, have died. Um, and those deaths have prompted uh, reports. And you can see when you look up um, elope and died, um, as I did, and then I, I sorted it by most recent reports. Interestingly, uh, the appearing here, Chicago Heights, was also came up in Ruth's search, uh, is there again in, in mine. So if you're from Illinois, um, the fact that this is come up a couple times, maybe um, something to look into. Um, when you look into these reports, you are able to find homes where what happened is quite serious and may raise a question. So I wanted to show you something that I found in preparation for, for this webinar, which was this particular um, uh, inspection report from Capstone Healthcare Estates on Orem in Houston, Texas. When you click on the link, what you're able to see in here is that a resident um, eloped in very, very hot weather, a 63-year-old resident um, was outside um, and uh, then subsequently was found outside with a temperature of 108 degrees Fahrenheit, was brought to the emergency room and uh, subsequently died. The resident had heat stroke and, um, and did not survive this. So as we think about all of the heat issues going on all across the country, uh, and you look at this, you may in fact, um, you may say like, you know, I'm really curious to see residents who have been affected by the heat and our tool enables you to do keyword searching to find examples of where 
you know, where you can look up words like heat stroke, you can look up words like air conditioning, and you're able to, to find examples where, um, where those come into play. Here's an example from a nursing home um, in Maryland, which is the opposite, I'm sorry, in Missouri, Mar uh, Maryland Heights, Missouri, where um, a resident walked outside when in the winter. This was from January of 2023. And the resident was outside when the temperature was seven degrees Fahrenheit with a wind chill of negative 12 degrees, wearing a t-shirt, light, light sleep pants, and no shoes. Um, they didn't find any staff when they entered the home. Uh, and when the resident was sent to the emergency room, the resident was found to be hypothermic and required emergency medical treatment. So they declared what's called an immediate jeopardy here, which as Ruth noted, is an immediate jeopardy to the health and safety of residents. So again, you can see that elopements are not just a paperwork error, but in fact put residents in serious danger. And when you just, when you're able to keyword search in nursing home inspect, and again, I'll show you my keyword here, where I look for the word eloped and then died in quotes. Uh, this goes back to what Ruth said about sort of structuring your query so that in elope, I wanted it to find elope and elopement and eloped. Uh, and in died, I really wanted the word died. Um, so there may be others where they use other words other than died, but from, from this search, we found um, 87 matching deficiencies, 67 reports in which both the word elope and the word died are in there. Now, that doesn't mean someone died during an elopement. Uh, you will look through some of these reports and find that that's exactly, you may not find that exact hit, but what you will be able to find is um, it, it, will, it will narrow down the, the pool of reports for you to take a look at. Um, we had a question in the chat earlier about uh, a resident who had been deemed in imminent danger um, and whether or not there were ways to see how often that had happened and, and home cited for this. So I took the phrase imminent danger and put it in quotes and searched for it. Uh, and we were able to see where it comes up within inspection reports. So simply knowing the, the phrase you're looking for is able to bring that up. Another example for you, um, I used the word terminated in quotes, um, to look for staffers who were fired by their nursing facility uh, for potentially improper conduct uh, at work. And I sorted it by most recent reports. And we see there are 344 inspection reports in which terminated is used just in immediate jeopardies. So these were cases where employees were fired. So if you're trying to sort of narrow down your universe of you know cases, we see the first two examples, most recent ones, from June of this year. So we're talking really recent, May of this year in Kansas. So if there are any reporters here from Kansas, you may have a story trying to understand what happened at these couple facilities that perhaps you want to you know, take a look into. Um, and you can see here, these really are getting you to um, employees who were terminated by, by their home. So if that's something you're interested in, you could do that, you could, you could set dates, you could choose your state look and narrow the field down, but there could be really good stories that are within there. Here's an example of a termination where we could see that the nurse was terminated for stealing um, narcotics that were supposed to go to residents. Um, and you will find lots of reasons for terminations, but by clicking through to the inspection report, you're able to get the report and then just keyword search the word terminated uh, in that report and it will take you right there. The last example I wanted to show you uh, involved a story that I did at ProPublica a number of years ago where nursing home workers were sharing explicit photos of residents on Snapchat. I had come across uh, an example of a nursing home employee who um, had been arrested for sharing uh, nude photos of um, of residents on Snapchat, and I wondered how often this happened. And so using the precursor to the relaunched uh, nursing home inspect, I was able to find 35 cases in which um, workers have been accused of surreptitiously sharing photos or videos of residents on social media. It, it is so, it, it's, you know, you think about all the things that can happen at a home and um, just how this strips residents of their dignity and, and it just breaks your heart, actually. Um, and in just looking in, in our tool for the phrase Snapchat, we see 32 deficiencies at 21 homes and um, and you can see some of them involve similarly really horrible things where they're putting photos of residents on Snapchat. If you do a search for, you know, for TikTok, you will similarly find that TikTok is mentioned in reports. So there's real, real power here in nursing home inspect. And what I like to tell folks is it really is a matter of just 
letting your imagination dictate where you want to go. And there, there's just such power in the um, the various ways in which you can sort and filter um, within Nursing Home Inspect. So um, that is what I wanted to share. I hope that was um, that was useful. And I think we are all ready to to come back on here for um, for questions and answers. So um, we're going to turn to the Q&A portion. And before um, doing that, I'd like to share a link to our event survey in the chat box. Um, we'd appreciate your feedback. And again, if you'd like to ask a question, click the Q&A icon at the bottom of your screen to submit it to us. And we will, um, and if Emily and Ruth can come back on, we will go to our first question. Okay, um, we have a question here from uh, from Anita Lee about, um, do you have a key for shaping queries? Any advice for how to shape the queries you use? Ruth, do you wanna offer any, uh, any advice on that? Uh, I mean, I think this is a combination of of, of your skills and, and the, then the cap capabilities of uh, the tool, but I would say, uh, we published sort of an, an advanced guide, um, and there is some some advice uh, in the advanced search about how to do that. Um, but I think it's a combination of trial and error, like looking at reports and kind of seeing what terms tend to go with each other and uh, tend to be describing the issues that you're interested in. So, you know, if you're interested in, like Charlie said, termination, searching termination, seeing what to, uh, terms tend to go along with the kind of terminations you're interested in and going back or finding your search. Um, and then just taking advantage of some of the more advanced things that we can offer now, you can search by uh, multiple terms as long as you string them together with and or or. Um, you can do kind of those more advanced searches where you search for, um, where you search for, you know, one, one term or the other or a combination of terms. Um, so just getting creative, playing around with what you can do, and again, just kind of I found it really useful to be like, oh, I'm interested in this broad concept, search for it, read a few reports, and realize that, okay, maybe that term isn't the right way to get at it. Maybe it's this term and just kind of keep refining. Great. Um, another question for you, Ruth. Um, does the ProPublica database support direct SQL queries? And what about exporting data from the reports? Um, was this, you know, are you able to integrate this with other data sources? Uh, we do not currently support uh, exporting your searches um, or anything like that, but that is one of the things we are discussing uh, in terms of, especially for uh, searches, how to make it easier for people to uh, extract information um, from the tool. So uh, stay tuned. Okay, uh, another question. Will uh, a reader or user be able to identify if the inspection report is an annual one, you know, the 15 to 18 month routine cycle, um, or if it's a complaint investigation inspection? Um, oh, Emily, are you good? Nope. Yeah, I was, I'm happy to answer because I can see that you can, yes, see that on Nursing Home Inspect, and you'll also see in the survey document itself, it will refer uh, to complaints, and it uh, you should be able to determine which citations are related to which complaints, although you probably, you'll not know much outside of that or what the complaint contained since it's pretty anonymized. Great. Um... How can I tell if there is a downward trend and how a nursing home, you know, if there's a downward trend in a nursing home to detect a potential indicator of elder abuse? Um, in terms of what we offer in the tool, I think um, there are just a few things to look at. Um, there's those flags that we surface that should surface if they're, you know, if it's a special focus facility uh, and things like that. One other flag that we uh, do currently offer that I didn't mention before is a change in ownership flag. So if the if the ownership of the facility has changed in the last 12 months, uh, we flag that uh, in the hopes that um, you know, maybe that could be an upward trend, maybe it could be a downward trend, but maybe there's some kind of change that's happened in the facility you want to keep an eye on. 
And then I also just like to look at the recent inspection reports um, and see are there more severe or serious deficiencies more recently? Uh, are all the serious deficiencies in the nursing homes uh, passed several years ago? Are there more complaint reports recently? Things like that. Just kind of looking for recency within those inspection reports. Yeah, I think one of the tricky things and that everybody should keep an eye on is that different states um, have very different, you know, um, inspection mechanisms that while the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services oversees the nursing homes across the country, they contract with inspectors at the state and local levels to do those inspections. Emily talked a bit about this and, and those uh, state inspectors have different levels of strengths. And so some states are pretty aggressive at citing and finding homes with problems. Others are, are a very light touch. And so, you know, it's very hard to compare nursing homes across state lines to one another. What you want to be able to do is sort of look within a state and look to see, you know, hot performance within a state. Um, now, certainly, if you're looking for incidents where residents, for example, choked on food, potentially died, like you can look across the country for examples like that. But it's very hard. You know, you see Ruth showed uh, the slide of how in Maryland, I believe, 75% of homes are late for their routine inspections, right, Ruth? I, I hope I'm not miss 74%, right? Yeah. Um, but so in Maryland, right, you you would expect they're not going into homes as often, so they're not going to be finding as many problems. You wouldn't want to compare that to a state that that wasn't, you know, in place with. But within the state, I think what Ruth said, you know, looking at different time frames and seeing does the home come up you know, in a recent time frame as well as the overall time frame can be really helpful to understand trends. Another question, uh, does the tool provide access to 990 forms, which are the nonprofit tax filings um, or financial information of nursing homes? And these apply to uh, only nonprofits. Uh, Ruth? Uh, we do not, um, but you can feel free to check out our nonprofit explorer tool, which lets you uh, search uh, by nonprofits uh, and search their 990 data. Um, I think I could drop a link to the, that in the chat in just a minute. Um, and you know, maybe there'll be some fun crossover we can explore in the future where we link out to it on uh, individual nonprofit nursing home pages. Um, do you know how to find the nursing homes payments to their affiliated parties? There's a, you know, a note that the inspector general plans to look into this. I don't believe that this information is in the data that Medicare makes available um, payments to affiliated parties. This is where perhaps looking at the 990 form, if it's a nonprofit home, um, you'd be able to see you know, payments to their contractors, the payments to their executives. Um, I don't believe this is in the CMS data though. Um, does the nursing home inspect database support a public API? Um, and is, uh, we've already addressed the SQL question, but is there a public API? We also do not have a public API. Um, another thing that we are considering, uh, CMS does have a public API um, that you can check out uh, for pulling some of their data. Um, so if you're just looking for like a direct data pull, uh, that might be a good place to start. Um, does our tool uh, allow you to track COVID infections, hospitalizations, and deaths among nursing home residents and staff? We did have some of that information uh, closer to the start of the pandemic. Uh, we transitioned it to uh, vaccination data as that became available. Um, in part because some of the data we had felt outdated, um, like if nursing homes were now doing better when they'd previously done worse at the start of the pandemic. Um, but we, we are considering adding lots of new data. And, and if, we, if we determine that, that that is still useful and relevant data, we may re-add some as we continue to expand the tool. So there's a question for me here. Was Snapchat the keyword you use to find all the explicit photo cases? Um, I actually tried to use various um, words, understanding that it wouldn't just be the Snapchat platform. And also like sometimes inspectors who are unfamiliar with Snapchat used it as two words, snap space chat. Um, and so you need to uh, think like how might uh, an inspector who may not, for example, use the tool, like refer to the tool. Um, and this is where when you use direct quotes, you know, any variation can be meaningful in the sense that you want to try different 
combinations of things. Otherwise, you may box out something you're really looking for. Um, you could look for photos. You could look for videos. Like I, I, I have a tend to have a broad search strategy. I think Emily, you talked about having a broad search strategy too as you look for things. Uh, yeah. Um, in terms of trying to find, I think you know, I think that the keyword demonstrates sort of like what, when you're looking for very, something very specific, but if you're looking for something that is more like a general harm than understanding kind of like what inspectors would pick up on, again, back to those F tags, like that is kind of like what is helpful um, to, to kind of pursue your story. Uh, there's a question about, can you compare a facility's violations to star ratings? So star ratings are um, Medicare's uh, effort to group facilities within a five-star rating system where five stars are the best and one star is the worst. Um, we have not incorporated stars into our own presentation of this information, you know, in part because we have felt that um, having access to the raw data on individual inspections, we don't, our nursing home inspectors not attempt to be everything for everybody. Um, and so we really focus on inspections because this is the, you know, they can't be gamed by facilities. And I saw a couple of questions about gaming. And you know, this is where inspectors go in. They are the eyes and ears for the public. And we really want to surface what they find when they go in. So we are not sort of relying on the star ratings and don't include those in our presentations. And if I could just add a little bit to that, that each of the star ratings actually takes into account um, a lot of the raw information that's available on the tool or available from CMS. Um, and then kind of does some kind of calculation that was decided upon, you know, at some point and then produces a star rating. Um, and so what you're actually looking at is the actual info that goes into that star rating. So it's not completely divorced. Um, and it probably is a little bit more useful to like the average person's brain to look at the, the, the literal, you know, staffing and whatever and, and whatnot. Um, is the database searchable by funding source? So like Medicare, Medicaid, private pay, et cetera. Uh, it is not, but again, we are, we are planning on expanding kind of the ownership and, and I don't actually know a lot about what funding data is available, but um, if there is kind of in-depth funding data, we can definitely try to incorporate that. Yeah, as we said at the okay. outset, this applies to Medicare certified homes only. And so many Medicare certified homes also take Medicaid and private pay. But for homes that solely take private pay, they would not be included in the nursing home compare tool. And similarly, um, so they have to be a Medicare certified home in order to be included. I don't believe Medicare releases information other than on Medicare cost reports, which are highly technical reports about the sources of funding within the homes. Um, and so that that is not something that we've incorporated into our tool. There's a question about whether you can filter for location by state, county, city, zip code within 25 miles. Like, can you put in uh, sort of the circle, the radius of what you're looking for? Yeah, you cannot. Currently, the closest we can get for that is the county level uh, search. Um, like Charlie said, you know, we're, we're kind of trying to balance um, being everything for everyone versus, you know, being really specific on these inspection reports. And we decided not to prioritize that right now, just because uh, there are websites like uh, CMS Care Compare that do kind of let you do more of a geographic based search. Um, but that, you know, that is something that's on our radar for an improvement down the road, but we have kind of higher priorities right now. All right, well, last call for questions. If folks have it, please feel free to, to put it in um, in the chat. Oh, I, we have another one. Um, can you find facilities that have successfully challenged violations and were able to get reductions in the severity or get them erased? So this was actually a bit of an issue some time ago that the New York Times reported on, I believe, how facilities were able to avoid having their penalties show up because they were appealing them for a long time. And CMS made a, um, a change where they are now showing the fines that facilities face 
before the entire appeals process, you know, has, has played out, which will bring a level of transparency to those. They may like change the fine if they are successful, but I think they're not waiting to have those appear until the point at which they had in the past. I don't know if that's actually taken effect yet or not, but that will, that is a win for, um, for transparency. We, I don't believe though, that we have the specific data on which fines were subsequently um, changed. Uh, we should have noted that we update our data every month. So as CMS releases new data, we update the data, which means a couple things. One, what you'll find is sometimes older inspection reports from say more than three years ago will disappear from our site. If they've disappeared from the CMS site, they're going to disappear from our site. So it's a very like dynamic site that is dependent on CMS's data. Similarly, if a fine is updated, we will see the updated fine, but I don't think we're going to note on our site that that fine number has changed from prior reports. Um, this There's another question here about when we are referring to Medicare, are we referring to Medicaid waiver facilities? Um, I think specifically, as CMS says, the data in their Medicare compare and then the inspection reports they're making available are for Medicare certified sites. Uh, and so that is that is their definition of the data that's available. Uh, and that's the definition we're using as well. Uh, is there a shot we're going to expand the application and database management team? I mean, that feels like a question for you, Charlie. Well, we're really proud of um, of this tool, and clearly we've put a lot of um, Ruth's time and others' time into, you know, really overhauling it from top to bottom, the, uh, the, the back of it, at back end of it, the front end of it, making it super useful, and you've heard Ruth talk about adding additional features to it. If you haven't checked out ProPublica's entire suite of news apps, it's pretty uh, amazing. We have a robust uh, team of six or seven news app developers and a news app editor who just work on these custom tools and other, um, you know, interactive graphics available to reporters. And so if you're interested in a job, we post them on our, our site, propublica.org slash jobs. We don't have any open right now, um, but we, we do support a really robust news apps team. Uh, okay. Um, we would are you able to share the general timeline of your next rounds of improvements in search features? Uh, I think we are not uh, we haven't really scoped out exactly like the dates, but um we're hoping to start on those right after this, um, probably prioritizing improvements, the filters uh, first, and then adding in the ownership information. So hopefully in the next month or two, um, we'll start to kind of uh, see new features rolling out. Um, but, you know, I don't want to overpromise. Yeah, we've had a couple comments also in the chat about additional resources for reporters to turn to. And I think it's really important what, what Ruth said earlier, which is, you know, this tool alone uh, should not be the sole basis for any reporting you do on nursing homes, nor should it be the sole basis upon which, you know, family members select a home. Um, we are... Um, we encourage you to chat with, you know, knowledgeable folks. There are um, long-term care coalitions that are available in different communities. Um, I really, you know, in, here in New York City, the LTCCC um, is a really great group that has good data and good expertise, um, but there are similar groups all across the country. Um, there are long-term care ombudsman's offices that are also good resources in every state, you know, in the country um, to be, you know, who are experts at this. And so we would encourage you to sort of reach out to, you know, folks to put anything you find here in context. And of course, to reach out as well to the facilities for comment if you're going to include um, what they um, you know, information from the reports. Uh, on inspection reports, there are generally two sides. One is, you know, what's called the statement of deficiencies, and that's what you see in the data that we're using. The other side is called the plan of correction, and the plan of correction is not actually in this document, but is available either through a freedom of information request to CMS or actually nursing homes are required to make their inspection reports available for public inspection in a public area of the home. So if you're a reporter, you can go to the facility and ask to see the report, and that will include uh, their plan of correction. There is another question here about um, whether we can address um, 
whether a facility has a, a REIT ownership or other types of land ownership structure. Emily, I think you wanted to tackle that one. Yeah, I, I can't answer the specific question, but what I can say is a couple of things about ownership, which is that um, uh, CMS does publish and has uh, recently um, like uh, bumped up its uh, publish, uh, publication of ownership data. I know when we were doing the story in Indiana, what we, we relied heavily on the legal business uh, name, uh, which is located in the data, if you end up working with that. Uh, part of uh, what CMS offers. Um, so that is that is available and seems to be increasingly so. And I think just one word of caution, I think like Charlie said, that you'll always want to like expand your reporting beyond nursing home inspect or CMS uh, or whatever you end up using um, to just look at Secretary of State records for uh, LLCs and uh, see if you can, you know, pull together these different uh, company names that way. Um, it's there's not really an easy answer for uh, ownership, unfortunately, because there's a lot of ways to kind of um, separate those into individual entities. But uh, but it's possible to do a lot of research if you combine these different record sources. Thanks, Emily, and thanks, Ruth. Uh, that is our time for today. So thank you to our audience for joining us and for your really thoughtful questions. Again, this event has been recorded, so you'll receive an email with the full video of today's event. We'll also post this recording on the ProPublica YouTube channel. So please take a moment to fill out our event survey linked in the chat box. Um, stay up to date on all of our upcoming programs by visiting our event page, which is propublica.org slash events. We'll drop a link in the chat. And from all of us at ProPublica, for Emily and Ruth and myself, thank you for joining us. Have a great rest of your evening and see you next time.